before we do that, let's let's get our videos linked right. Let's both start recording at the same damn time. And Think. good. <laughs> so now we're getting our video up game right now. We have three different cameras going on hey, in the studio for those of you who are right. listening to the audio. Um, but that's email, right, all us. you visual like <laughs> listeners here. <laughs> we're trying. Watchers. We're trying. The reels are doing well, so that's why we want to get this shit on uh, focused in. But E-Man, tell us about the beer that you brought for us this week. All right, man. This is a brewery that I they had one of my favorite summer beers of all time. And I have not tried this one, and I'm very excited to. I think Ch- I think they're on the west side of the street, right? Chipoygan Sounds West, if I'm uh, not mistaken. You know what? Dude? I'm gonna feel like an idiot because I really don't. I, know. I don't. I, I don't know <laughs> geography, guys. <laughs> oh no, it, it's not. Eric is pointing. It, they're it's like not. the pinky fin- finger right. of the mitten of the cool, state. Cool, the pinky finger <laughs> of the mitten. Got it. All right, so over from Chipoy <laughs> Chipoygan Brewing. Chipoygan <laughs> Brewing. <laughs> 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 I am botching. Right, Can right we before, run that back? Can we run that? <laughs> right before we were literally just like, all right, we got to do a better job with the beers because we buffed it last week. <laughs> uh, and then I freaked it. Like it. <laughs> and, all right, so over from Sheboygan Brewing Company, we have the Blackberry Blonde Ale. Uh, coming in at 5% ABV and two IBUs. The untapped description, and you can follow us on untapped at Beats, un, Beats and Brews Pod. Uh, fresh air and water to go in hand with this ale. We carefully balance ripe blackberries with a crisp malt body for just the right amount of succulent and tartness sweetness. This is per- the perfect brew for enjoying outdoors. I feel like succulent and moist are just in those words that just I hate saying out loud, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're on like the tip. Oh, yeah. oh so, so it's more tip like the index, index. finger. Like the tip making... of the index <laughs> finger. Got it. All right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm excited to get into this brew. Apparently, it's perfect for summertime. It's been cranking a good like 80, 85 degrees out here in the Mitten State. So let's rock it you out. You know, it's kind of perfect too. This uh, packaging for those of you who can see it in the camera here. It's nice and purple. So happy birthday, Prince. Um, let's we- see. I mean, I yeah, we it. totally coordinated that, Cheers by the way. Cheers to you in the camera. Your aura is <laughs> purple. I want to be fucking with my camera this whole time. Hey, at me got, got the selfie cam myself. going. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us getting production value in our shit now. Although I had to restart mine because I realized it was facing the fucking piano a minute ago. My dad called my phone and it derailed the whole video of it. But anyways. Oh, you got to turn that bitch on Do Not Disturb, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um... But anyways, while we are toasting up these beers, let me pull up my friend Dre Dav, friend of the show. Friend and just in general, the homie. Um, What is the name of his new track that he dropped? E-Man, do you remember? Oh, it's Top Gun. Top Gun's the new one. Or no, that's... That's not no, it. No, that's not it. It's Cold Water Mackin, right? Yep, Cold Water Mackin. That water sounds Mackin. right. So um, as we get a little sip on this local beer, we also want to play you guys a little bit of Dre Dav. So while we do that, um, here you go off his brand brand spanking new single, Cold Water Mackin'. Got a little bit of a currency vibe. Let me give you some of this money now, cause I gotta get out of here. Uh, it's that big joint rolling, always smoking. Mister, make a bad bitch bust it wide open. Flight team repping, I'm higher than the heavens. Walk inside the party, turn into the smoking section. Tell these hoes I'm the one, not the two. Girl, you chose me, baby, I ain't choose you. Bitch, I've been a max since I hopped out the womb. And you pussy foot niggas couldn't walk in my shoes. Oh, swear to God, I'm the flyest nigga out. Bitches taking selfies, trying to post them for the club. Keep her ass north and her face to the south. Then this bitch took a pic with my dick in her mouth. Baby, it's the planes and I'm El Capitan. Mile high club plus one, bring a friend. Mary Jane rolling, yeah, it's potent, take a hit. Girl, I guarantee you never meet another me again. Baby, you ain't never met a motherfucking Mac. Real fly nigga with a pocket full of racks. We man, bitch, yeah, I'm really pushing peas. Baby, I'm a genie, you ain't got a friend like me. Bitch, I'm a Mac, got a whole lot of game. Real street nigga, and I'm never gonna change. Bitch, I want money, I don't care about fame. So you just do you while I'm doing my thing. Uh, coach Dad, baby, I should write a manual. Real peas don't need Kevin Samuels. You nigga 
this hounding bitch. <laughs> 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 we could cut it. We could edit it right there. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Uh, okay. <laughs> right um, man, that's definitely a West Coast vibe out of um, you can Trey t- Dab on you that You can one. tell you've been listening to uh, a lot of, lot of currency. Yo, definitely. That's a lot of currency. A lot of Larry June-ish. Or uh, a Harry a Fraud-ish. Harry kind of Fraud or uh, what's that? Cardo. Mm-hmm. Cardo, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like that by Dre Dev. Shout out Dre, man. I really like uh, everything he puts out is dope to me. So you know he's our boy, man. Yep. We always gonna, we always gonna hook a flight team guys up. Like, yeah. This beer, dude. This beer is weird. Shout this out is at Arctic Circle pool. Brewing, by the way. You see the nice little cup. ACDC. <laughs> um, but dude, this is weird. I expected the flavor to be a little bit stronger. It's kind of um, a way, real subtle on the flavor. It's you know really I mean? high on the carb too. It definitely is. It's that part really I like high about on it. the carb. You know what it actually kind of tastes like? It almost tastes like a seltzer, doesn't it? It's a little bit more bitter than a seltzer, but I, I can see that. Like, you know the what carbonation I'm saying? Like, is very the, like the more yeah. like subtle taste to whatever the flavor is, and like I expected, like especially being blackberry, because like blackberries have such a strong taste when you eat the actual fruit. I expected it to be a little bit more, um, more of like a bite to it. It's I a think. little bit more tart than a, I mean. It says like the amount, the right amount of succulent tartness. So I'm like, it's definitely got like that tartness, like punch to it. It's still got almost like this weird, like bit, not even weird in a bad way, mind you, but like this like bitterness at the mm-hmm. back end of it too. It's almost like it's almost like it's not an IPA, mind you, but it's almost similar to an IPA where it's just on the back end, where it's like got like that little like hop bitterness, but it. It's not quite that. It's I don't very, know where it comes from. It feels light, though. Like It feels like a... Like, so, in the words of, of my dear friend E-Man across from me, it feels very crushable to me. Like, I can feel like you could drink this fast. It's a crispy boy. A fruity crispy boy. Mm-hmm. It's very... It's got a very good, like, tropical aroma to it, too. Like, you can, you can tell it's very, like... I really like fruit it. Fruit forward, in a way. I've no, it's, it sips. is I great. Really like it, it is great for summer. Yeah. yeah absolutely correct. Uh, Chiboygan, you guys nailed this you could almost, as far like, as like the flavor and what I expected personally. So, I feel yeah. like you could almost drink it over ice. I'm not even joking. Like it, it feels more to me like that type of beverage than like a beer beer. I don't know. I wouldn't do that because it would take away from the flavor with the water down yeah, probably. and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I like that. Shout out Chiboygan. I, l- I like Sheboygan's uh, artwork, too. They do some cool stuff with their... Oh, 20 IBUs, by the way. What it is, says oh, that okay. on the can. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. two IBUs. This tastes way too bitter for two yes. IBUs, stuck on the back end. I'm like, all right. Fresh air and water go hand in hand with this ale. We carefully balance ripes of blackberries in a crisp malt body for just the right amount of succulent... Tartness, I almost said fartness, and sweetness. <laughs> this is a perfect brew for everything that's outdoors. That's a totally different type of beer. <laughs> but no, that's that's correct. It says perfect brew for everything outdoors. This is definitely a beer. I agree. I wouldn't want to or something like that. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, shout out to them. But anyways, um, moving forward, I wanted to get into this story about Justin Bieber. It's fucking so bizarre. Did you watch the video? I don't know why I keep snapping like that. I don't know what that is. Huh? Yeah, I hear that little pop too, but no, mm, whatever. All right, know. go back. Let's go yeah. to the beeps. Okay, but anyways, um, yeah. So, did you watch the actual video footage that he put out? All right, so he put out a video, and it's crazy. He literally. So, what the syndrome that he came down with is called is Ramsey Hunt syndrome, and basically what that does is it leaves one side of your face paralyzed. So he's talking, he's telling, he's telling, like, it's a little Instagram clip that he did. He's telling you what's going on with him, and the left side of his face is moving, but the right isn't. Like, he can't blink his right eye, he can't move the right side of his mouth. The whole right side of his face is fucking paralyzed. All right, I got a question. So what's the difference, and this is me uninformed, completely my ignorant take right here. You, What's the difference between that and cerebral palsy? That's a complete no. You're thinking Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Bell's I think is caused by like so when like Conway. Conway yeah, I, was, I was about to say Conway yeah, or even Bell's palsy. or even Fifty because Fifty can't move his mouth a certain way. Both either. of those so were caused are. by gunshot wounds. Okay. So I think that was what led to the paralysis in those guys. And I don't know what causes. But I mean, I guess I could probably just Google it really quick. Why not? Um, let's see. Cause of Bell's palsy. Is it like a blood pressure thing, maybe? Like, is it like, I don't know. Let's see. And I don't know if it's, because I, I don't know if, if every case that it's like um, where it's permanent, like Conway has, 
The cause of Bell's palsy is, on, is unknown, but is thought to be caused by inflammation affecting the body's immune system. It's associated with other conditions such as diabetes. Symptoms of facial weakness or paralysis get worse over the first few days and start to improve in about two weeks. So I think there is cases where it can cure itself, and then there's also cases where it's with Kanye where it's forever. Yeah. Um, but with Justin's, they said that they think that his is accustomed to, um, you know, overworking himself and not, you know, sleeping properly. And, you know, these are things that a lot That's of artists right. go through when they're, you know, um, doing shitloads of tour dates like Especially these guys Especially like Biebs, who's been around Massively, since he was like 11. You know, yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, prayers so, are- Oh, yeah, no, I was just going to say basically what he said on his thing is my doctors are like, you know, you got to cancel these shows. I got to fucking rest, take care of my eating, take care of my sleeping and all this and everything. And I was like, damn, dude, that's crazy. So, yeah, pr- like, like, you know, how old is him. how old is Biebs now? I think he's like 28 or something like that. I'm going to say he's right definitely now. late. Yeah, tw- he's got to be. Li- no, I don't think he's in the 30s. I think he's late 20s. Let's see. Let's just. Do that. It's so nice having a computer back again, too. Right? <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah, welcome to Trinity Club, dude. <laughs> it feels good. Um, let's see. Justin Bieber. Wikipedia. Let's see what they got him. He's 28. Okay. Yep. Born in 1994. Dude, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't, you know, I still don't like his music all that much, but like I'm kind of starting to like him a little bit as a mm. dude, just as a guy. Mm. I don't know. I've, he been seems wor- like, I've been working on that for a couple of years. I feel like he's like kind of growing into himself. You know, he's a he, he's he could have been way worse off. I feel like I for told, how young he got I famous. told you that uh, <laughs> these kids that get and I yeah. said this like six times on this podcast. Sure. These kids that get famous quick don't know how to fucking act because they never had to do normal shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a fact. That is definitely true. Um. But all right, so anyways, moving along, um, I wanted to get to, so this has been a topic that E-Man and I have definitely talked to, um, with you guys about a lot over the last year, and that's how um, certain things can influence the popularity of music. So TikTok will make an old song pop or a television show. And that's currently happening right now. With I Kate almost want to, I almost want to play the Stranger Things theme song like while we we're doing that. <laughs> I don't know. That that would probably be our biggest copyright fucking flag. So of all I'm gonna just do that. I, you, you want? You think they would copyright if I just like while you're talking like? <laughs> you think that? You think that count? It'd be all right. Yeah, I think I'd be all right. Let's do it. Yeah, I think so. And dude, so much for my beautiful i was just bragging about how i had all these camera angles your iphone storage is full <laughs> oh my god all right no Eric, more video out of my 12 something 12 30 <laughs> jesus um, right. but anyways back to k bush so as we were talking as e-man just alluded to it came from stranger things the new season of stranger things um what's the what's the redhead's character's name a uh, max max so Max, um, you know, is going through. I don't want to give. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a certain song that Max listens to, and it's called "Running Up the Hill" by Kate Bush, um, and it kind of like is her center throughout that the series. So she listens to it in like times of craziness and stress, right. and that song has been played on. I think damn near almost every episode they've had the song on, and that song has literally blown Kate Bush back up the charts again. And, like, it's crazy because I think the song came out in 1985, if I'm correct. Let's see. You know what I'm happy about? Up here. It makes me think of, uh, remember Dogface? Yes. <laughs> it makes me think of Dogface <laughs> like and Mac, Fleetwood right? Mac. Yeah, exactly. Same, 100%. Similar scenario. And it's just crazy because, you know, she she hasn't put out any new music in a long-ass time. She still performs occasionally. But um, not much. I want to see if it has what. Yeah, it says, all right, so Kate's Hounds of Love album peaked at number three on the UK singles charts as released in 1985. Um, and Kate has previously opened up about the meaning of the lyrics, saying back in 1985, it's about a relationship between a man and a, a woman. They love each other very much, and the power of the relationship is something that gets in the way. Mm. It creates insecurities in saying that the man c- and could be the woman and the woman could be the man. If they could just deal with God to change places, uh, if they could cut a deal with God to change places, uh, I'm trying to see if it has where the song is at on the chart. Oh wow! So <laughs> it says 
The music video of the song became such a huge um, hit on YouTube since the Stranger Things came out that it has spiked 800% since since the Netflix show came Ooh, out. Wow, good that's fucking shit. crazy. Good for her, man. Um, and I think it's also funny, and we can also bring that back to hip-hop a little bit, is I didn't, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I knew a lot of Kate Bush music, but the reason I got put onto Kate Bush some years ago was literally through Big Boy from Outkast. Big Boy has been on record saying that Kate Bush is, um, I think I think he said it's his very, he's got two favorite artists of all time. I can't remember what the second one was, but he said Kate Bush is one of two of his favorite artists of all time, and uh, which is just so funny because you don't really like necessarily hear her influence in his music, but he's like a super stan. He's always posting about her. He got to record a song with her, and he was like geeking the fuck out on on social media about it. So, um, yeah, shout out to Kate Bush, shout out to Big Boy and Outkast. That's what's up, man. Um, I, I I not hip to Kate Bush. I really didn't know who she was until the Stranger Things. It uh, definitely episode. is some eighties. Well, she's actually a lot of it's super timeless, but that song in particular definitely has that eighties feel for sure. Um, but anyways, yeah, moving along here. Um, we want to get to, I'll, I'll kick it over to E-Man because I know he's probably more, even more excited about it than I am. The return of the boys. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were talking about John Cena. Cause John Cena is coming back to wrestling and John Cena is going to be a topic on another different thing we're talking about here. Yeah. However, I do want to talk about one of the best, like comic, not only comic book shows, but one of my favorite shows, probably Amazon's best show they have on TV to yeah, me sure. overall is The Boys made its return back last week, dropped three episodes, and then... Oh, no, no, sorry. Two weeks ago, and then dropped an episode four this past Friday. Yep. Uh, oh, we did talk about him a little bit last week. I forgot we, did. we talked about the dick. We did, we <laughs> the did. The sounding. <laughs> we, we did. You, you, know that, you know that whole scene is based on the Thanos theory? You know what the Thanos theory is, What's right? What's the Thanos theory? So the Thanos theory was in Avengers when... Mm. It, what about about Ant Man and Damn. Thanos? Oh, okay. Yeah. So wait. Oh, wait. Tell. All right. <laughs> spell it out. So for, <laughs> for you guys listening at home, yeah, the yeah. Thanos theory is that, and I don't want to spoil Avengers Endgame for you guys, but if you haven't watched Avengers Endgame by now, then you know. Fuck you. Anyway, so <laughs> like, so <laughs> respectfully though, respectfully. So that's Ant Man. <laughs> it's time stamp that Literally shit. Just that. It's gonna say if you haven't watched Ender's Game right now, if you haven't watched End Game by now, fuck you. That's the whole clip. <laughs> anyway, so the theory is that Ant Man, who's played by Paul Rudd, right. who we all love. Uh, shrinks down. He plays a character named Ant Man, and I'm doing this for the people that are not comic book people. Mm-hmm. Shrinks down to a tiny size, like an ant, right? And the main antagonist of the Avengers Endgame and the last one uh, is Thanos, mm-hmm. which is this old warly leader, or whatever. Anyway, so you guys know who the fuck it is by now. Anyway, so the whole thing is he shrinks down and climbs in the Thanos, whatever orifice possible. Let's go with butthole. Let's go with butthole. I mean, it could be mouth, it could be nose, it could be ear. But let's go butthole just go for, for the, for the humor factor. Let's go, go butthole. butthole. <laughs> so he climbs up there and then expands and fucking kills him. That was the whole theory, that the Thanos theory, that was actually mentioned in the movie. It wasn't yeah. called Thanos, mind you, but yeah. Actually, no, it wasn't mentioned. I in the think movie, it's called. Yeah. I think it's called Thanos because he went in his anus, right? So. That's absolutely <laughs> why it's called Thanos. <laughs> but I mean, there's like other ways to get inside his body, I guess. But anyway, so going back to the boys, <laughs> uh, let's just say without a spoiler. I mean, I, there's no way not to spoil this. I guess that theory gets tested. As we should say, yeah, for sure, it gets tested the fuck out of actually. Yep, and you, know what's, uh, you know what's funny is like, um, now that you brought that up, the Ant Man thing, I did read that they they think that that was um, the Ant Man was in mind when the guy wrote this character because he's called the Termite. The in, Termite, yeah, no, it absolutely so was. It is, like, no, that was a thing. Of, yeah. Like they, there was articles about that. That was so. That was completely based off the Thanos yeah, theory. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was because of that. Yep. I saw the meme. It was like the the Dogecoin fucking dog or whatever. Did you did you see this no, meme? No, no. The the actual small Dogecoin dog was uh Avengers, mm-hmm. and then the big one was the boys. He goes, "What's wrong, King?" He goes, "Marvel didn't want to do the Thanos idea." He goes, "I got you." 
look at our work and then it's fucking boys episode. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that There's, happened. And I mind you, that's a very small part of what's going on in the boys. There is several I, disgusting sex scenes, by the way. Oh, in the first not few only episode. what they're run, they're about to run <laughs> hero gasm. I was explaining so for you guys. Don't even ruin it. It's, no, no, it's not up. even a spoiler. It's not even a spoiler. Like, okay. right, I mean, right, this is already right, in the, right. this is already in the comic book, okay. and this was already before the season start. They were gonna touch hero gasm. For those of you who are not <laughs> familiar with hero gasm, and so hero gasm is a story in the actual comic book, The Boys, where if you guys are if you guys aren't familiar with The Boys, by the way, it's just like this whole imagine like the Avengers as fucking degenerates. Yeah. Anyway. So there's this whole thing with hero gasm where it's just like this big ass, pretty much orgy type situation. It's like that, but it's like a big party. It's like a rave, a orgy. It's about a, a bunch Group of things. Sex for superheroes, but, but superheroes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was a story that was in comic book and it involved some really, 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 really fucked up shit, like severely fucked up shit. Like if you watch the boys, like if you guys are already at home watching the boys and stuff like that, you already know what I'm talking about. If you haven't watched the boys. Uh, if you have a weak stomach, don't watch it. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you like that fucked up weird shit, I'm definitely with it. I'll be the whole thing with hero gasm though is like there's this whole big party that goes on, and then there's some stuff that got cut out of the comic book that I read ahead of because I'm such a fucking nerd about this. But they cut out one particular scene with Homelander that I'm a hundred percent glad they did. I told you yeah. off mic what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't talk about it here, uh, because I might. You know, I don't yeah. want I don't want to fuck some people up. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really happy. I think that's gonna be episode six of this season, so I'm really interested to see what that goes for. But the first four episodes of Boys, I'm really fucking happy. I'm gonna make a went. bold claim right now about the Boys. I think that Homelander is the most terrifying uh, superhero villain of all time, in my opinion. Up to right now, they're so they're trying to explore ways. He's basically so. We're kind of getting to a season where they're trying to develop, they're trying to uh, determine if he is or not. But from all other standpoints, he's basically invincible, and he can basically Think fucking. Of, he's pretty much Superman, and he can. He fucking is essentially Superman nuke, without the kryptonite. Nuke the world with his eyes and the drop of a fucking hat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if you're face to face with Homelander, you can, even though he's the biggest asshole and piece of shit on the planet. That's you an can't, understatement. You gotta fucking. <laughs> you gotta bite your tongue. You can't say shit back because he can literally fucking. Melt your face in two no, seconds. No, calling Homelander an <laughs> asshole and piece of shit. Mind you, I was Homelander for Yamakon last year. Yeah. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but that's was, a very big understatement. Like this man has done some of the most fucked up fuck shit I've seen on television. <laughs> and, and you know oh, what? So man. what? And we sort of mentioned it last week. But what I think is so cool about the boys, and you know, a shout out to whoever wrote the. The, the original so comics. You know Seth so. Rogen produced the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. And it's the same guy that wrote The Preacher, Um, you know, the, yeah. the, yeah, so, and I think Seth Rogen produced that as well, The Preacher one. But anyways, so what's so cool about it is it's a more honest take on how superheroes would actually move and work because just like society, they wouldn't be all wired to be out here doing good for everyone. There'd be some fucked up. Yeah, they're not. Bo- they're definitely here, not Boy Scouts. They're <laughs> like alcoholics. I mean? They engage in terrible some things. of the craziest of fucking would... debauchery you right. can imagine. Uh, I mean, the first ten minutes of ep- season one, episode one, like some crazy shit happened. I don't want to give it away, yeah. but like you. You kind of picture it like, okay, it's going to be like kind of like an Avengers show where everything's kind of happy-go-lucky and stuff like that. And then it just go- takes a hard turn <laughs> left <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. And that's one thing I do like about The Boys because it's such a good spin on like, what if, you know, on the ca- in front of the camera, right? In front of the camera, in the media, stuff like that. All your famous heroes, like you kind of, you that's what you perceive. But imagine if Captain America, or well, Batman's also kind of a degenerate in the way. But imagine if Captain America or fucking Superman or all these people when healed. acted like, <laughs> man, if they went healed, essentially, <laughs> if they behind the scenes, they they are just fucking heels in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's the best way to describe it. Yep. And that's what I do love about the boys. Speaking of which, this we uh we we went through birthdays already, but I do want a quick shout out one more. Carl Urban's birthday was a couple days ago. From the guy who plays Butcher, plays right? Butcher. Yep. yeah. So shout oh, out to yeah. him. And uh, shout out to the series because it just got picked up and renewed for season four. I'm excited, man. Yeah, it's it's really good. So all right, so the first episode made me feel weird. It was mostly because of the very fucking degenerate ass sex scenes. 
Um, there, and there's then, more to come. But then episode two was like so no fucking good, and I fucking love it so far. Like the the way episode four just ended was crazy. Uh, oh, and the way they fucking uh, spoofed the Kendall Jenner commercial. Oh, <laughs> dude, I thought no, I didn't want to. I didn't want to give that away. I didn't want to give that away. I thought about that the whole time. Like I watched it last night, and I'm A-train, like, train, bro. Oh my A-train god, age. I love how A Train is like hit <laughs> that fucking costume, bro. Yeah. This this <laughs> fake Super ass pandering. like. This Juneteenth ass costume that he that's did. That's exactly what it oh is. Oh my god! This. Is <laughs> oh, that's funny. I mean, he 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 reminds me if that costume reminds me if uh, Apple decided to do Juneteenth things like just companies that are historically like just. Yep. I I don't want. Actually, and that's what happened. Like Walmart got. A, actually, Eric, can we cut that out? Because I don't want to mention a company specifically that could hurt us. Oh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck that company. Fuck Walmart did the same thing with fucking okay. the Juneteenth ice cream and like yeah, yeah shit it's like all that. happening. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, just like these. Okay, yeah, I would just say if these major companies decided to just like just. They, monetize they, like, they want to monetize Junte- <laughs> we could fuck up a future bag though never want to fuck Walmart? up a future- yeah right no no not Walmart but the other one we blanked out <laughs> we blanked out um, but anyways we gotta keep going on because we do have more to discuss All and right. since we're still in that TV movie realm I wanted to mention I'm not gonna talk about it very long because E-Man doesn't watch the show yet but Peaky Blinders just dropped season 6 the final season on Netflix I just saw that it popped up on my thing like right before we left for the season or for the show tonight. So I'm excited to go home and watch some of that shit. Um, if you're not watching Peaky Blinders, it's so fucking good. Like I don't, I can't even describe to you how well it's acted and shot and filmed. And I was curious, you know, uh, how they were gonna go about taking on season six because um, the actor Helen McCroy, who is a big part of the show as Aunt Paul. Um, passed away after season five of cancer. Um, And so I was really interested to see how they were going to write that back into the series. I did watch the first episode and it is addressed um, within the first 10 minutes of the, of the show um, in a pretty fucking crazy way. Like a it starts out with a really um, emotional, intense scene. So if you're not watching Peaky Blinders, I really suggest checking it out. It's very easy to catch up on because I want to say the episodes are not even an hour, and I think they only do like six or seven episodes a season, which is also cool. Like, so normally I I do bitch about like shows that are super short nowadays and how like all these seasons are so much shorter than they used to be. But what's cool about them being six episode seasons is there's no fucking filler episodes. Every episode is like guns blazing. Fucking crazy! That's one show I need to really get. Cause I, I mean, the period piece shows stuff like that. Like that's one. That's one particular one I've been meaning to get into for a while, and I'm glad that the last season just dropped. So I'm all right. I'm gonna just go through. I'm gonna just one day, one of these days, I'm gonna go through and just like knock them all out. I'm not sure if the last season is split up like they've been doing a lot of stuff on Netflix lately. So I'll have to wait till we get there. I did notice that there's (laughs) six episodes on the sixth season, so may it could be like a you know part one, part two, like all the like like Key just mentioned Stranger Things. Um, but we'll have to see. But I am very excited. Uh, one, uh, one quick thing I want to do, like mention too. Uh, I want to go back to the boys real quick. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. So there was one particular scene. <laughs> this is not a big spoiler, but like the uh, the CIA agent in there was talking about the. Uh, they were talking about how they were set because they were stationed in where the fuck was it? Uh, in Vietnam, uh-huh. right? And that's and they're talking about like trading weapons for cocaine and stuff like that, and then mother's milk. Who's like one of my favorite characters on on the boys? He goes, "Were you a part of that other Which thing?" Which one's Mother's Milk? The big ass black dude. That's a part of uh, Butcher's Crew. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's Mother's that's, Milk. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that was his name. Yeah, Mother's Milk. I forgot his actual name, but they call him Mother's okay. Milk. Okay, that's like All his right, nickname. For sure. Anyway, so Mother's Milk. He goes, "Were you a part of that other thing?" And then he goes, "We were, yeah, we were uh, also advised to like." distribute cocaine into predominantly black neighborhoods and stuff like that and my very first thought out of everything was like fucking franklin saint (laughs) (laughs) fucking franklin same thing i had the same exact thought with you in my head that's very funny oh i like that fucking teddy and franklin saint (laughs) i'm like that's the crossover we need (laughs) um 
Well, one last thing that I don't want to talk about very long in the movie world because I have not seen it yet. E-Man just watched it before the podcast, um, but I don't want him to ruin anything by talking about it too much. So we do just want to mention that there is a more serious Adam Sandler movie that just hit Netflix. Um, what's it called? Hustlers? It's not.